Today we're taking a closer look at the fourth generation Mamba F722 app stack. And if you're looking for a flight control and ESC setup for your premium build, this might just be the one for you. So let's take a deeper dive into this flight controller. All right, so here's the packaging for the flight controller ESC setup. And on the front here, you have this Mamba logo on here. Pretty nice with the snake on here. On the back here, you have some of the specifications. Pretty much this is the Mark IV F22 and the APP, meaning this one here can be run with an app. Besides that, this thing here is full of features and we'll talk about it shortly once we take a look at the flight controller and ESC. So just to open this up, you have a tamper-proof seal right here. All right, now it says void, so we can't return this anymore. All right, and you have this Mamba system card right here with the QR code on the back to go to their website and or their social media. And then you have this, oh, okay, I see it. You pull this up, very interesting, pretty cool. And there's another compartment down here and here's all the electronics. So right here you have your bag with all your, looks like an XT, what's well, XT30, XT60, looks like an XT60, which makes sense, this is a pretty, big old flight controller ESC setup. You have some bolts here to mount your flight controller stack, some harness, and then some gummies to actually mount the flight controller ESC stack as well. Right here you have the ESC. This is pretty awesome. This thing is beefy. We'll take a close look at it. And they have a uh, electromagnetic firewall here to prevent interference from going into or leaving the ESC. Here's your flight controller. Pretty nice as well, F22 with the APP on here. We'll take a closer look at that. Just two wires here, so it's not connected to the XT60 connector. I wish it was, but I guess you can customize this and adjust this to whatever length you want before you put it into your drone. Some stickers, and then we have a couple of manuals here. Now, I wasn't expecting this. Looks like you have, this is pretty awesome. Now, these things aren't crazy expensive, but they included a practice board on here. So if you wanna practice your shorting skills, but many manufacturers aren't doing that. So that's pretty cool, you can have this, and that's just premium stuff right here. Another QR code, and that's it. Oh man, let's take a look at the flight controller first. I'm pretty excited about this. Now I've used this flight controller in another capacity, not this one specifically. I have used the F22 DJI version and that came in the Roma F6. This is a pretty premium drone, a six inch drone. This thing works really well and it has that same flight controller, but it doesn't have the APP. So I can't configure this with my phone or tablet or mobile device. Now with this one here, is a big step up and they made a lot of improvements from the Mark III. Now we have this harness right here. This goes to the ESC obviously so it can interact with the ESC. But besides that, the first thing I noticed here is just how large these pads are. Now on their website, they indicated that they've increased the pads by 30% and increased the distance from pad to pad by 100%. So this should be a really easy or very user-friendly board to work on, to configure, to solder. And that's evident by these big old pads. Now there's not a lot of labeling on these pads. So you definitely have to refer to the schematics that we talked about earlier or going online to figure out which pad is what. Let's remove this sticker during operation, please. Wear anti-static equipment. Obviously I touched it already, but sometimes when you're working with computers and components, you wanna have a anti-static strap so that you don't fry the, <laughs> the board um, or the processor on here. That's why you have these nice little silicone sleeve that came with these things. All right, so we have our processor in the middle here. The one that, the one that sticks up from the other boards is this little piece that hangs right here. And this is your Wi-Fi antenna. Now you can use this, although this is a diatonal or Mamba uh, flight controller, you can still use this with a SpeedyB app with this Wi-Fi antenna connected to your phone. And then you can configure this in the field or wherever you want to if you have your drone. Another improvement here is this USB-C. Now you can configure this easily or just power up this whole thing with a USB-C port. That's a big improvement compared to the micro USB that we've had in the past. You have your boot button here. Now this flight controller has six USBs. that's a lot. Um, obviously this is an F7 processor, so this thing can process a lot of things, hence the reason why you have six UARTs on here and you can put a lot of features. And I will be putting this to the test because I do have a drone that I have in mind and a build that I wanna do to put a lot of features going through this thing. This also has a barometer on here as well, so pretty awesome. Now there's also two BECs on here. There's a, a five volt BEC and a nine volt BEC. And that's pretty cool. A lot of the premium flight controllers have that on there, but this one here has three amps for each. So you can run a lot of devices 
or put a lot of load on those devices, which is perfect for like a digital uh, VTX like DJI or walk snail, or just add multiple devices to this one flight controller. So that's pretty awesome. There's also a 3.3 volt BC in here as well. So you have 3.3 volts, five volts, and nine volts coming from this one little flight controller. Now the awesome thing about modern flight controls are these ports right here. Now this reduces the ability or the need to solder on all these small pads, although these are one of the largest I've ever seen. You can just eliminate the soldering task and just plug your harness into here and that can go straight to your VTX and or your receiver. So they've done all of that and I will be taking advantage of that. Now on the back here, it just says Mamba F722 app port generation. And I think I'll be removing this sticker on here. I don't think it's supposed to be here during operation. Now with all these pads on here, this flight controller has to do more than just do the basic stuff. Now this one here can also control eight motors. So if you have an octocopter, this can control it. Obviously you need another ESC, but this has the capabilities of doing that. This also has 16 megabytes of RAM on here or memory so that you can log your gyro data and probably use it for you know tuning your quad or using it for stabilizing the image from your action camera. Pretty cool features on this. All right, let's take a look at the ESC here. And this thing is beefy, guys. This thing feels significantly heavier than the flight controller. And you can see all these large FETs everywhere on here. So this thing is a powerhouse. Now this one here is rated at 55 amps, which is pretty cool, and 60 for a burst. But with this kind of current, you can run this probably on a six inch build as well, or probably even larger. Really, really cool. Now on here, it has a little of the specs on here. This one here is a three to six S input. Obviously, we talked about the 55 amps. This one here is running the BL Heli 32, so that's pretty cool. So you can run all your D Shot 600, 300 on here. Pretty awesome. And then there's a target on here if you want to reflash it with something else. And I don't think that um, this sticker is going to remain on here either, but it does have the actual pinouts for this connector right here which if you want to do it separately, wire it up, you have your harness right here. Because this thing came as a stack, we're just going to plug and play, put this in here, and then just stack them together. Now this one here is a 30 by 30 stack, just like the flight controller, which is perfect for my five inch bill as well. You have these two big old pads here for your power leads, which we'll be doing with this in a few days. And then you also have these smaller holes here for your capacitor. And uh, yeah, there's a capacitor in here as well, which is, Awesome, really, really good. Besides that, the starting pads for the motors, they're pretty large as well and very well spaced out. The pads are huge, guys. Obviously, you can run multiple or pretty large motors on this, so that makes sense why they're so large. Now, on the other side, you have this firewall right here, and that's to prevent static or to prevent interference from coming into the ESC or from leaving the ESC as well. So we're not gonna remove that, and I don't know if you can even remove it. It looks like it's glued on there. So we're not even gonna move that, but everything in here is protected. But this is some of the stuff that you're paying for when you get a premium stack like this. This thing looks amazing. I'm so excited to get this thing wired up. So anyways, let me know what you think about this stack down below. And as I said before, I'll be doing a build on this. You don't wanna miss it. It's gonna be a premium build with my quad and I'm just using premium parts for now. So. Let me know what you think about this. As I said before, please hit that subscribe button there for you to be notified whenever I drop that video. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.